Okay, so we, we are continuing our discussion of uh, basic computer organization. We have uh, looked at uh, how do we send load and uh, output enable signals uh, to registers to write to them or read from them. We've also looked at a single bus design where only one bus was used to access all the registers uh, and components in your uh, data path, uh, ALU, right? So everything in your computer was being operated with one bus. And the problem with that was there was not enough parallelism. So things were moving very, very slowly. So we try to go for a three bus design in which one bus is a result bus. And this is only responsible to write data to the memory after it completes an execution of an operation. For example, if it finishes adding, it will write the result of that addition if the user wants to do that to the memory. Uh, another bus is the memory bus. And the memory bus essentially has the same width as the result bus. So result bus is of width n. Memory bus is also of width n. Memory bus also of width n. What, what is this n? n is the width of your memory. So if you have many, many, many rows in this memory, each row will have certain number of bits. That is what is n, cap n n bits wide, right? Um, so essentially your data lines are n bits wide. And now if you think about address bus, which is the third type of bus, this could have a different width, right? And we have, we have been calling that cap M, which refers to how many different locations do you have in your memory? So if you have two raised to M words, which means you have many, many rows in this, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. In total, you have two raised to M locations that you could access with M bit address. So for example, if M is two, right, then your options are only four of them, which means I can have only four locations. Uh, let me draw it this way. I can only have four locations in my memory but at each location, I may have several number of bits. So I may have eight bits, right? So N would be cap A, uh, uh, cap N would be eight and M would be two in this case. So M is two, that means four locations. And at each location, how many, what is the width? Width is N or eight in this case. So that's the difference between the two. So if M is eight, your address bus would be eight bit wide. So that's what we started talking about, the, a three, bit, three bus design so that you have, now you can uh, access each one of them whenever there is a need for that and you don't have to wait for the bus to be available. Now, we started discussing about how a single instruction gets executed or we called it the life cycle of an instruction. It starts with program counter. So the program counter, which essentially holds the address to the next instruction to be executed, loads that address into the memory address register. Memory address register is used alongside the memory itself. And now we would have to send a read signal to the memory so that we read the address, we read the location at which the in next instruction is present from the memory. Where is it read? It goes to the memory buffer register. From the memory buffer register, which is not shown explicitly here, it goes to the memory bus and finally ends in the instruction register. That completes step one, which is fetch instruction. So once the instruction is present in IR, the instruction register, our first step gets complete. Now, once we have the instruction, we would have to decode the instruction, right? So do you want me to add? Do you want me to subtract? Do you want me to uh, load uh, something into a register? Do you want me to store something to memory? What do you want me to do? We need to, st the, the following three steps depend on the decoding of the instruction itself. So the control unit is going to look at the opcode bits. If I go up a little bit more, you will see that the instruction register itself is broken down into opcode bits and operand specifier. 
which is an address, right? So the opcode bits, which are the first few bits in the instruction register, the control unit is going to monitor that. And once it looks at that and then decodes the instruction, we would know what kind of operation it is. And consequently, the control unit is going to send that particular uh, code, decoded uh, operation code to the ALU to make sure that it performs the operation that is requested. Now, the other piece of the oper op code is an operand specifier, which is essentially an address to the operand, not the operand itself, it is the address to the operand. So for example, if you are adding two numbers and we know that we can only do addition of two numbers at a time, right? So for example, if, if you are trying to add two numbers, the way it would work is first you would have to load that particular number into the accumulator, first number into the accumulator. Then, so for that, I would have to specify the address of the first number over here. Then I would have to add a new number from memory whose address I need to provide here to the accumulator number. That would be addition of two numbers. So I would have first have to bring one number into accumulator. Next, I would have to add it to the new number that I again read from memory. Then if I may, if I want to store it, I can store the result of that to uh, the addition of those two numbers into memory by using a store instruction. We'll take a look at those examples in just a minute. Now, we said decoding, right? That was step two, decode the instruction. So that was control unit looking at the few op uh, few bits in the opcode uh, field of the instruction register and sending appropriate control signals to the ALU, to uh, uh, other, other uh, registers. Next, the third step would be the actual, uh, well, we would need to fetch the operand. So after we do an, a decode of the instruction, suppose we need the operand to be read. Maybe we need to bring that operand to accumulator, for example. That would be fetching of operand. That would be the next step. So essentially that would mean you have given me an operand address. I'm going to look into the memory for that address and I'm going to read that to some uh, some uh, uh, register in my design, which depends on the opcode field. So that would be operand fetch. That's your third step. The next step is to ac actually execute the instruction. Executing the instruction has to take place in the ALU. All the arithmetic and the logical operations get executed over here. So that's step number four, execute the instruction. Next, you will have the result of that execution temporarily being stored in the accumulator. For that, I don't need to uh, for, uh, write another instruction. It is already going to be available in the accumulator. What I can do next is to simply uh, do a housekeeping, increment program counter by one, so that now we start looking at the next instruction. So th that cycle is going to keep continuing as long as you not have a halt instruction in your program. So if you keep having load and add and subtract and store instructions in your program, it will keep going one after the other. The moment we have a halt instruction written up in my our program, that's when the program counter is going to stop incrementing. All right, next, let's take a look. Uh, we have talked about these. Let's actually go through an example here. So let me erase this from the previous one. And let's see, how does all of this work? So the first example that we are looking at is an instruction, which is look at the current cont contents of the register accumulator and add to that some operand whose operand address I'm specifying, right? So I've specified an address. Go look at that address. You will find a number over there. You add that number to the current contents of the accumulator and put the result back in the accumulator, right? So that's like a 
incrementing accumulator by a number for which I have given a pointer in the uh, ad, uh, in the instruction. So le let us trace that. Uh, let us start over here. So the first step is what? The first step is to do an instruction fetch. Everything starts with a program counter. The program counter is going to have this particular instruction. It is going to have this particular instruction is called load accumulator. And we can have uh, more than one accumulator in our design. Uh, most designs that we will look at today will have load accumulator A and load accumulator B. But in this case, we just are showing one accumulator. So let's call this accumulator A. So load accumulator A, whose mnemonic is LDAA, that is what is we, what we are looking at. Load accumulator A with some number to which I have given you a pointer. So the first instruction would be move PC to MAR. So instruction load accumulator A is present at uh, the program counter. That address needs to go into MAR followed by a data read operation of the MAR uh, at that particular location provided in the MAR. What happens due to that? We will have the instruction itself available on the memory bus which eventually ends up into the IR, instruction register. That completes step one. Next, we look at the opcode bits of the IR. We will now know that it is looking to do a load accumulator step, a load accumulator instruction. Next, what do we need? We said, so this particular instruction will have what? It will have two things. One is the opcode will be, would be load accumulator right some bits that uh, inform us that it is a loading exercise the other part is going to be the operand address right that's the same address that you wanted here those are the those that's exactly the same so essentially the accumulator already has the number it, in it the number that you are trying to add on to that is what you provided in the instruction. So load the op code refers to loading accumulator A, a specific code for that. And then the rest of the bits are going to be for an address. So clearly, you know, if we, if we think about this, because this is an address, this should be M bits. And because this is being stored in the memory, the total should be N bits wide. So with this, you can find out that N minus M is actually the number of bits in the opcode. Which also means that the number of operations we can carry out, number of operations, maximum, maximum number of operations we can carry out is going to be 2 raised to N minus M, right? So by, by just looking at the instruction register format, um, if we know the number of bits that are reserved for the instruction register, we can find out many things about, uh, uh, you know, the M and N and how many operations uh, can we can be performed. So, for example, I, I'll just do a quick example here. Suppose your instruction register is 24 bits, right? 24 bit IR and you have a 16 bit PC, right? Just suppose that, right? So the question is, if you have a 24-bit IR and a 16-bit PC, how many uh, maximum? What are the maximum number of operations that can be performed by this particular computer? Gavin says 256. Let us try to see it is. Uh, let us try to see whether we can reach there. Now, program counter is 16 bits, which means addresses are 16 bit, right? So addresses are 16 bit means six, M is 16, right? Because it's an address field. And 24-bit IR, which means N is 24, right? 
and the difference of them is going to be what? Uh, eight. So eight is going to be eight bits for the opcode field, which means two raised to eight is going to be what? Uh, two raised to eight is uh, 32, uh, 64 is six, 128 to 56 is absolutely right. So this computer can do 256 maximum, right? This is the maximum. The maximum number of instructions that can be performed here in this case are 256, right? So that's how, you, you know, just by having the the fields of, of IR and PC, we can, we can deduce all of that. And I hope, uh, you know, you can also uh, figure out that the number of bits in the IR cannot be lower than the number of bits in the PC. Right, um, because we would we would then have no bits for the opcode. So you know that's another consideration that we have to do. Let's keep moving. Um, the fourth step is to oh did we do the operand fetch? Okay, let's do the operand fetch. So once we look at the operand address in this field, we are going to move that from IR to the MAR. Once we move that address to the MAR from right here, we are going to initiate a read sequence and that operand is going to be fetched from the read sequence to ALU B side, the load path. So now one number is already ready for me. The accumulator is what I'm adding to. That is already ready here and I've now loaded the second number that was pointed to in the instruction itself onto the loads uh, load path ALU B side. Now I'm ready to do the addition. Data is available on load path, move the data to ALU, configure the ALU to perform the add operation. Who does that? The control unit after decoding the instruction sends that particular uh, operation code to the ALU so that it knows it is doing the addition. Um, and then once you do the addition of the accumulator, which is already present or hardwired to ALU A side to the new number, which we just read from the memory, the result is going to be available at the output of the ALU, which will be fed back to the accumulator. That's by default. It, it move result S to accumulator. That happens automatically. You don't have to write a separate instruction for that. That completes our, uh, our instruction. So update program counter by incrementing it by one so that it points to the next instruction in the program. Now this is helpful, you know, this is assuming that our program is written one line after the other, right? It's a, it's written in a contiguous manner. Um, so that's an assumption that we are making here. Now, uh, somebody asked me the question uh, last time about why is this particular there, uh, this particular connection there, right? Why is the IR connected back to program counter? And I mentioned something about the branch instruction. So for example, if your instructions are not one line after the other, and you want to jump to a different uh, part of the memory, because you, know, you want to start in executing instructions in that location, then you would have to use a branch instruction for which you simply have to provide an address of the next instruction to be executed. So that particular operand address will be directly loaded into the program counter for the branch instruction. So for the branch instruction, the op code would be some bits to uh, code encode branch instruction. And then the operand address would be the address of the next instruction you want to jump to, right? So in that case, the, the address directly moves to program counter and there is nothing else to do like no no alu needed nothing you just increment the program counter by one so in that particular case you know there, there is no fetching of operand there is the execution of op operation is simply uh, loading the program counter with uh, the ir operand address field and that's it right so that that's that's why that connection is there for the branch instruction Okay, uh, let's see. 
What is the control unit doing? The control unit is transferring data from one register to the other by manipulating the load and output enable signals. And it al it's also asserting appropriate control signals to the ALU, to the program counter, to all the registers, and in fact, all the components in, the, in your computer so that they can, uh, they can operate in the way the instruction is set up. Um, we can think about the control unit uh, in terms of a series of register transfers. So we can, now we are starting to look at, instead of writing everything in words, can I denote all of these operations using a register transfer notation or not? So let's take a look at that. So instead of saying move contents of program counter to MAR, I can simply write that into a register to register transfer notation as PC arrow MAR. So that essentially means move program counter to MAR. Memory read, that means initiate the memory read for the memory. Then whatever you have in the memory buffer register, move that into IR. That completes instruction fetch register, uh, instruction fetch step. The second step in your life cycle of the instruction is to decode the instruction, which means if the opcode field of the instruction register matches add from memory, then you do the, the remaining, right? So it's just a comparison of the opcode field and a lookup table essentially, which maps opcode to a particular instruction. In this case, we are comparing with add from memory. All of this is for the, the same um, uh, AC equals AC plus uh, memory address, the, the same instruction that we traced earlier. Uh, let's see. So add from memory, then what do you do? We need to fetch the instruction. So we were provided with an operand address in the instruction register. We are going to move that address into MAR and initiate a read sequence. Once we read that, data from the memory is going to be available on the load path and that is directly connected to the ALUB side. So instruction execution involves memory to ALUB, accumulator to accumulator A, both are ready. You perform the ALU add uh, operation. The control unit is going to assert that signal to do the addition. And then the result ALUS is going to be moved to uh, accumulator. That completes instruction execution. And then the last step is housekeeping, which is PC equals one gets updated. So PC gets updated with PC plus one, right? So by just writing uh, this register transfer notation, we simplify uh, how we denote um, how things are moving, right? So instead of writing everything in, uh, out in sentences, we can just use register notation to, to simplify this. Now the next um, uh, instruction that we are going to trace out is load something to accumulator. And, and that something is being indicated by an address. So this, is, uh, this instruction essentially means go look at this address. Whatever you find in this address, load that into my accumulator, right? So load something to accumulator. That's what we are, uh, and that something is being uh, provided. The the uh, something is being provided to us by using an address of the memory. And in this case, we are also writing some micro operations, which means that we are writing operations such as PC first moves to an address bus, then address bus moves to MAR. Right. So earlier we were just going PC to MAR. Now we are writing even the micro operations. Um, so PC moves to uh, the address bus, right? So if I go back and take a look here, you see PC to MAR happens on an address bus, but eventually it ends in MAR. So if you were writing uh, just the operations, then you would say PC to MAR. If you were writing micro operations, it would go PC to A bus, A bus to MAR, right? So that that's the uh, differentiation between the two. Now. A bus to MAR, initiate the read sequence essentially means put a one on that control line connected to the memory, read or uh, write complement. So if it is one, it is reading. If it is zero, it is writing. Then when you read, the MBR will now have the data that you just read, which is essentially the instruction to be executed. 
which goes to the memory bus. Memory bus gets eventually into the IR, right? So that's instruction fetch micro operations. And this would be for every operation, right? It doesn't matter whether you are loading to accumulator, whether you are adding, whether you are storing, no matter what the instruction is, these first five steps, why micro operations would be consistent. But the next one is going to be different for different instructions. For example, all of them, you are looking at the opcode field, but all right, so what does that mean, right? So here, Alan says, what does this mean? This means read, make it one, write, make it zero. So there is one control line going into the memory. That control line is called read slash write complement. So for a read, it is functioning as an active high control. For a write, it is active. It is functioning as an active low control. So when it is when that particular wire is high, we are reading from the memory. When that particular wire is low, we are writing to the memory. Right. That that's why there is a read slash write asterisk. That asterisk indicates that it is actually a bar over there. So I hope that answered the question. So in, in other words, earlier we were just saying initiate a read sequence. Now we are saying make that particular read write control line one. They both mean the same thing. Uh, next, what are we doing with the instruction opcode field? We are in this case going to compare with load from memory because that's the instruction that we are executing. So lookup table compare the opcode field with the fields for different instructions. And if it matches the one for load from memory, then you do the other three steps, which the first one of them is operand fetch. I have the address. Where was that address? It was the operand address field of the instruction register. I'm going to take a look at that particular address, move it to the MAR, initiate a read sequence. And that is how I load the number, right, load something, load that something to the uh, M, I, I'm reading that from MBR to memory bus, memory bus to ALUB, right, on the load path. Next, I'm going to, because I'm loading this to accumulator, right now I have it here, right, so if I look at this, I have loaded the number over here, I eventually need that over here. So one way to uh, do that is simply to pass this ALUB on to the result, right? So essentially think of it as ALUB plus zero, right? Just pass ALUB through the ALU. So that's what we are doing here. ALU pass B which means ALU A is not playing any role. And how do we know that? How do we know how to manage that? Well, the control unit, once it compares it to load from memory, then it has to indicate to the ALU that, okay, right now we are loading from memory, which means that ALU A side is not going to be operational. We are simply going to pass ALU B straight through the ALU so that it is available at the ALU result S, right? So ALU result will now go to R bus, R bus to accumulator, which is when that instruction gets compl completed. And then we do the housekeeping as usual. Questions about this instruction, load accumulator. So essentially this looks like this, right? So suppose we have a memory here and we have some address here, uh, A1. A1 is my address I'm saying, right? And then here I have my accumulator. And at A1, I have 56 stored. I have 56 stored at address A1. So when I say load uh, memory address is what? A1 to accumulator, whatever accumulator has, suppose originally it has 10. At the end of this instruction, 56 is going to move to accumulator. That's what is happening here. We are indicating an address A1 in the 
in this field where is that field a, a right here we are indicating that as part of the instruction register the operand address and when the instruction gets completed we, we would have loaded that number located at that address into the accumulator so if it was originally 10 it would change to 56 uh, well it, it, it could have been anything originally but now it would have changed to 56 all right let's move on let's do an example over here which is load something something is uh, an address location of in the memory to accumulator right load to accumulator and the second example is store accumulator to some address so we know that things after they get executed in the alu the result comes to accumulator now if that is your final result, we may want to store it to the uh, memory. So in that case, how would we describe these five steps in the three bus design? So for load to accumulator, the five steps of the register transfer operation would be PC to MAR, standard, memory read sequence, and then MBR to IR. These are standard and consistent to all the operations all the all the instructions will go through these things instruction fetch doesn't change at all then instruction decode because we are doing a load something to accumulator we are going to compare that opcode field of the instruction register with load from memory if it matches then we are going to load whatever address you gave in the instruction register that is the operand address we are going to load that address into the MAR and perform a read operation. Once we read that, we are going to see that the load path will have the number that you just read from the memory, which is connected to the ALUB side. Uh, so in that case, we can uh, actually, we don't need, now we don't even need to go through the ALU. Because we have a three bus design, I can directly go from the MBR to accumulator through this path. Uh, where is that? Not, not there. Uh, where is Memory bus to accumulator. <laughs> right, so we are, are, we are not writing all the instructions here this includes uh, mbr to alub uh, pass alub and alu result to ac And then the last step would be to increment the program counter by one. Next, let us see how we can store the current contents of the accumulator to certain address. So we would have to change the opcode because now we are trying to store something and we are going to have to give it an address wherever you want to store this, right? So this is your target address now. Where do you want to store the accumulator right so let's see the first few steps are the same program counter to mar then we initiate a memory read sequence and mbr will currently have the instruction register which will eventually end up in ir so ir will now have two fields right op, op code and operand address op code will be for storing to memory and operand address will be the target address where do you want to store in memory so if the instruction register opcode is uh, the same as one, the one for store from memory, then we are going to move the instruction register address field to MAR. And once we have that address in the MAR, we can move the current contents of AC into MBR and then initiate a memory write sequence. That would mean that AC would be written to uh, whatever address is provided in MAR completing that instruction and increment program counter by one 
Next, uh, just want to point out a few uh, micro operations, right? So uh, some of the operations are directly implemented and are not being shown. Uh, so for example, PC plus one is PC, right? Because it happens in every cycle, this is implemented directly and not as a separate instruction. So we are not going to say, all right, load PC into uh, the ALU, add one to it and then store the result back into PC. We, we don't do that. We are directly going to implement those functions. So for example, even uh, ALU pass, right? Or if you wanted to uh, write a zero on program counter, so as to uh, make the first instruction the zeroth address. So those kind of operations are directly implemented uh, into your computer. So for that, we would not have to write separate instructions. <laughs> all right. This is uh, all I want to do for this lecture. I'm going to stop recording.